Hi, Christine. Thanks for being here. Hi, Marianne. Glad to be here. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, I'm really hoping that we can help um, caregivers and parents understand when a teen that they know may need therapy, maybe more than weekly counseling sessions, or even those who have been in an inpatient setting, they may need something less than the inpatient setting. So by the end of our time together, my goal is that viewers will understand what online day treatment is and how teens can be provided with faster and maybe longer lasting, better mental health results in the end. So I've got uh, about five or so questions for you, okay? All right. All right, so for loved ones of teenagers, how do you know when a teen needs more than outpatient counseling? And how do you know when an online program is right for them? Yeah, great question. So if a teen has already been engaging in outpatient weekly counseling, if there hasn't been expected gains, there might be a conversation about changing the level of care. And Armor Online is a higher level of care. So typically, if someone has been seeing a weekly therapist, maybe they have good rapport, maybe they are making some progress on their goals, but if it's not expected and there still is serious um, dysfunction in two areas of that teen's life, so maybe school, home, work, peers, um, a day treatment program could certainly be considered. And when we're looking at if an online program would be applicable for that particular client, a couple of things that I um, typically bring up are um, what is the school setting and how flexible might their schedule be? So in the Armour online world, um, you do have to be able to kind of track and have attention span. So that might be one way to help know if an online program is appropriate for you. And what do you maybe do in your treatment therapy to say, well, yeah, you don't need attention two hours to be staring at a screen. Like, what does that mean to a parent? Yeah, correct. Teenagers and all um, all people really right now in our world have a limited attention span. And so we know that that is something to have a conversation about. If someone has a difficult time remaining in a space in their own room for even a short period of time, that is something that might not be a good fit. But in, in Armor Online, we um, we take a break. So there's a certain amount of time and then we'll take a break. We also allow for drawing and fidgeting and maybe standing and sitting. Um, we've had some clients who've used a yoga ball to engage their core. Um, all those have helped with attention and focus. No one is perfect. However, if a client is able to be prompted to return their focus to what's happening on the screen in our group, that is a good a good fit for a client. Okay, that, that's good to know. Those are interesting um, things to think about when you're in a day treatment setting. So how does it work when you're, say, using a screen versus in-person? Group work, individual, and what does kind of a typical day and week look like? Yeah, so a typical day and week is is two hours a day, um, Monday through Friday. Um, when you're in person, there are benefits, but when you're online, there are also benefits. The platform we use is Zoom, and Zoom has a way to send individual chats to all the people that are within the meeting. So that can be advantageous for clients to share maybe a more personal fact they don't want to share with the whole group. And it also can be helpful for us providers to prompt for uh, more attention or to make sure they understand maybe the concept that's happening. Um, so those are just a couple of the, the advantages to really being online. Um, additionally, clients are able to be in their own space, whether that means they're at their own home or they're in school. And we have seen that for some clients, when they can be in a safe spot, as opposed to moving to an in-person day treatment program, they have more control over their space. And there is a feeling of safety that we can help foster on the online world. Hmm, okay. And so it's typically then a group setting. It's typically six or eight in a group. Yes. Yep. Um, we always have two providers within the Zoom meeting. And depending on the group size at that particular time, um, our a full group is considered eight. And sometimes depending on, on the day and attendance, we might have as low as three, but we really vacillate between that five to eight time on a typical day. 
Okay. And what teams do you believe do the best in this program, in an online day treatment program, providing they meet the, crit meet the criteria for a step down or a step up approach? Sure. Yeah. Teens with a variety of mental health symptoms really can thrive in the Armour Online world. Um, a couple particular success um, stories that we have had have had to do with social anxiety and reintroducing themselves back into the social world, especially after our pandemic. Other teens that do well are teens who have struggled with depression and might need more aids and assistance and behavioral activation, or teens who have problematic family systems, a part of our Online day treatment program is that family is involved and we do look at attachment, communication and relationships. And we have um, been, been very happy with some of the, the progress that's been made even over telehealth. Okay, now I know you've um, mentioned that you need a private setting obviously, but with an adult who knows where you are, who's close in proximity, whether it be in school or at home. So if both parents are working and the teens at home alone, would this work? No, nah, typically we we would discourage um, a, a ongoing client to be at home alone. And so the the other al the alternative for that is to attend at school. Because we're able to meet with teens all over the state of Minnesota, there are some school districts that have worked so well with us where they provide a space. Sometimes that's a conference room. Sometimes it's a school counselor room. Sometimes it's um, a, a, ro a multi-purpose room for that particular school. Um, so as long as they have a private and a confidential space, um, that is what a school needs. We do need a school staff member who is accessible and available for us to work with for that client. Typically, if the client is receptive to therapy and motivated to be here, um, that staff member doesn't need to have a lot of involvement with us. However, we will call if our client is late or if they don't come back after the break. There is some of that accountability that we need to partner with. Um, and if at times we are not able to reach that person, then we, um, because we also, safety is a priority, we don't hesitate to make a, a police wellness check just to make sure that all is well. We can control some things on our end, but we cannot control all things. Yeah, I, I um, appreciate that. Um, so we are Christian Family Solutions, Counseling Care and Services, and so a lot of people wonder, do we only treat kids who are Christian, and how does Christian integration work? Um, why don't you explain on your, from your point of view how that works in your setting when someone comes in asking for Christian integration and when someone doesn't want it? Sure. All staff at Christian Family Solutions are Christian. That is a part of, of our company and really why we give care. However, um, we know that in all therapeutic areas of an identity for individuals, um, one person, uh, there are many options out there. And so if someone comes into Christian Family Solutions, we ask everyone, how do you want faith to be incorporated within your care? Or do you have, do you use faith as um, something that is, is supportive of your overall healthy mental health, or do you have hurts related to faith or spirituality? So those conversations really open the doors for clients to know that their thoughts and opinions and experiences are valid. And if they desire an intentional Christian integration, um, and we Armor Online also has individual therapy within the group setting. So individual therapy is a great time to really dive in to some of those more personal identity issues. In the group setting, it can be an element that bonds clients, but it can also be an element of differences where we know as a part of our world, there are many differences between teens and adults and people. And so if it is not an area where teens bond or have a connection with someone else, it can just be an opportunity to learn pro-social skills where we offer respect and listen with care, but not necessarily um, required by any means. Right. And so it sounds like then when they want to integrate it and if a group setting isn't always the best way to do it, you have individual and family sessions every week Absolutely. with clients. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's where. Thank you. I think this is just a great start. We have lots of information on our website that'll help. But Christine, you do such a great job in really um, identifying with clients and really helping them. Would you leave us with maybe a short client story, maybe something that you noticed someone coming in and because of the online program and because there was no other access to care or maybe transportation was a problem that this client thrived? 
Yeah, yep, I'm thinking of a particular male who came to us uh, maybe in the middle of last year. Um, and this male chose Armor and Line because the family had some connection with um, Christianity within their within their household. This particular teen did not. And uh, the teen came to us with some pretty heavy depressive thoughts, feelings, and had some levels of suicidal ideation that were trending towards safety risks. Um, being in Armour Online, he was able to engage with other peers his own age. Um, as a provider, I saw him re-engage in personal interests, started playing the guitar more. Um, when summer came around, he was more excited about the day-to-day. -day. His overall mood and activity levels gradually went up. And um, at the time of his discharge, he was able to say, even though this wasn't where I wanted to be when I came here, I am so glad that I was because it really did help. This teen and I had a couple of conversations that said, here's why we're doing what we're doing and how it can help you. And at the end, he told me he didn't agree with me at the time, but he was able to reflect on his progress and say they did help, even though I wasn't um, the most receptive at that time. So sometimes in, in, in the middle of group, um, people can wonder how it's helping, but most times when we can look back, they can say, ah, I see why this was a helpful thing. Right. And I know that it's our, our program, our day treatment is trauma informed yes. and DBT inspired. And that goes whether we're in person or online with you and, um, and aftercare for a teen like that and for other teens. Yeah, yeah. Aftercare, we typically recommend that they will discharge back to their outpatient provider if they came with an established outpatient provider. If they don't, we will work with the family to provide a, um, a few referrals and to get back into that outpatient world. Um, there is a waiting list for some of those things right now. So we will offer a limited um, interim care to make sure there's no lapse in um, therapy care. However, um, it is a priority of ours to consult and to have that continuation of care for all of our clients so they can continue the progress that they started here in Armour. Yeah, that's terrific. Thank you. I don't want to take any more of your time today. I appreciate you and all you do. And um, I know that um, people will find the same when and if they get to see you. Thanks. Thank you, Miriam. Okay, bye.